What's up everybody? I'm heading off to Europe in about a week and I told my buddies over at Dean Guitars that I was a little nervous about flying with my number one, the Croc Top ML. So they were cool enough to send me a brand new V to check out. So I don't know how to do an unboxing video yet. Honestly, I think I'm just too old for YouTube. It's a very cool, just standard box. Got a case in here wrapped nicely in bubble wrap. I always feel like every time I open these things, I shouldn't just. I feel like this is cheating just to open them up and dump them out like this. So yeah, this case is probably a lot better for flying than a normal hard case. Sometimes those latches will just bust open or TSA will break them. Because they're cool like that. Ah, ha, ha. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I'm kind of a... Uh... Kind of speechless there. Let's see what we got in the case. Looks like handles for the bag, so you can probably strap this. Yeah, handles for the bag, so you can probably strap this on like a backpack. This case is pretty dope because it's actually got a cutout right here, so you could put an ML shape in here as well. Plenty of extra Allen wrenches for the Floyd. So let's talk about what we have here. This is a V79 in Trans Cherry with the Floyd Rose Tremolo. This is an import model made in India. The first uh, made in India guitar I think I have in the collection period. And we made a couple different changes on it before it went out. For example, I got the uh, cream pickup rings, the double cream DiMarzio pickups and it's an original Floyd. I'm not sure what comes on the standard one. That might be original Floyd, it might be a, a Floyd Rose 1000 or something like that, but, but yeah, either way, this is an import, and first glance, it feels good, the weight's good. The neck profile, I really dig. It's like, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that slight V shape that Dean is uh, famous for, but this one has a V and it's not as pronounced as like maybe the uh, the Cowboys from Hell ML. And that's pretty cool in itself that basically showed up from Florida and it's still in tune. So my first impression is I'm really impressed. Normally with a lot of imports, you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, with Dean, they've always been really cool about it. I mean, the fretwork feels pretty good. I don't think they did really any ad additional dressing at the USA shop before they sent it to me, probably because they didn't have to. You know, the fret edges feel all right. Fretboard looks good. Frets look nice and polished. Probably not the easiest thing to see with all the light reflecting off of it. You can't quite make out the grain in there. Not a deficit by any means, but the top, you can definitely see the wood grain in the top and I think the top looks great. I mean, it just got a really nice sheen to it. I'm really happy with the finish, and I'm really happy with the neck. I mean, that's great. I like the little volute right there. I would say this is closer to the, the actual 79 spec than the Korean 79s they were making a couple, quite a few years back. This one's great, man, I'm really impressed. I wanna plug this thing in now.
So the guitar is set up super well and get all the nice pitch harmonics on. I'm always looking for that one. If the guitar is not set up right or the action is too low, sometimes you can't get this one. It's very important to playing the Salamonizer. So what I asked Dean to put in here was a DiMarzio Super Distortion and a DiMarzio PAF. Neck pickup sounds nice. That's the bridge. And something I did a little bit different on this guitar is I wired the tone control to be a bass cut for the neck pickup only at full volume. Turn the bass cut almost all the way off. You can really hear the difference. The tone is intact, but all the low end is kind of gone. So this PAF copy, like many PAF copies, is not going to be too boomy in the low end, but you will notice if you use a high output neck pickup, a lot of times that low end just muddies up all the notes and chords, so there's really no way to get around it other than to cut the bass out. And when you're playing clean, that usually doesn't matter so much. It usually shines through really well. But with distortion, too much bass will just flub everything out. So I like to just, I like to just make a little subtle adjustment. <laughs> So that's all the way up. Turn it down about almost halfway. Back up. All the way off. probably never going to turn it all the way off but just to cut a little bit of that bass out that's really all I want Back the gain off a pedal or the amp a little bit, it sounds a lot better. That's about halfway. Almost halfway. I like that better. Another factor about a great setup is the nut action, the relief, the action at the bridge. It's all got to be just right if you want to get dime bombs all the way up the neck. Very nice.
did customize this a little bit more since I got it. I replaced all the black fine tuners with the brass colored. I just thought that was going to pop a lot better against these knobs and the cream uh, plastic here. Another little trick is with Floyd Rose springs, I don't feel like they're ever that quiet, especially with uh, even the, the quiet springs. I feel like you can still hear them ring out. So I just take a little bit of plastic tubing, cut it in half, and slide it inside the springs, you know, so it fits tight and uh, you don't hear it ring out. That's pretty quiet. Really, that, that ring you hear isn't the springs. It's back here. You can hear that. And you can counteract that by putting a little piece of foam or something like that under there, but that doesn't bother me as much. Live, it's not really going to go through. You know, I got, I got some noise gates and stuff, and that's, that's really subtle. If I'm recording or something, you know, I'll put a piece of tape across there, and if it really bothers you, you can always put a piece of foam or something under there. That's prone to happen on any guitar, not just this one. So that's very normal. So this guitar comes with a black truss rod cover, but there's no other black plastic on there besides the back. I had a pit guard cavity cover that was cream, didn't fit the guitar I needed it for, so I actually just traced out the other pit guard, put that one on top of it, and uh, routed it out to, uh, to match. This one really is a cut above. I mean, this is made in India. I had a lot of apprehensions about Dean moving factories from Korea to India. And where the Korean Deans were made, so were LTDs and a bunch of other brands. They were, they were all being made at the same factory. I don't know the politics of why they had to move, but I mean, this is a, this is a great guitar. There's no fatal flaws on it. The finish is good. The fretwork is good. I'm also really impressed that they can sell this for that price point. I mean, I think it's 629 on their website. And obviously this one's a little bit different. It's come with some upgrades. You know, I've got an original Floyd. I think in the stock model, it's either a Floyd 1000 or maybe a Floyd Rose Special. Either way, you're going to get the same tuning stability. And all this is stuff that you can upgrade later if that's not what you're into. Well, there you go. That's the Dean V79. I'm going to be taking this bad boy with me when I go to Europe in a few days for the Guar Tour, and I'm really excited to be playing this every night. So to everybody at Dean, thank you very much, and I really appreciate the continued support, and I can't wait to see everybody when we come back to the States this fall. See you later.